In this video, we're going to talk about basic fluid mechanics. And um, we begin with the continuum assumption. Then uh, we talk about uh, Newtonian and, and non-Newtonian fluids. We discuss the, the different flow types that can occur in a microchannel. We talk about uh, diffusion, surface tension and contact angle. These will all be important for what comes next. So first of all, what dominant properties does uh, fluid flow have? It has kinematic properties such as acceleration, transport properties such as viscosity, and uh, diffusivity also belongs here, thermodynamic properties like temperature, and uh, other properties like, uh, like surface tension that do not belong to any of the above. Um, the continuum assumption means that uh, properties, so any of these properties are defined everywhere in space and vary continuously over the flow be, uh, between two points. This is valid uh, in the range that, uh, that microfluidics will, uh, will be in. It is not valid on the nanoscale anymore, but uh, on the scale where we are, it is certainly uh, valid. And uh, yeah, just to emphasize, the continuum assumption is valid on the macro scale, but it is also valid, mostly valid on the micro scale. So, but as we downscale, so if, if we think about nanofluidics, then the intermolecular forces become more dominant. About Newtonian and non-Newtonian, you might have heard these terms already. Newtonian fluids are the ones that have constant viscosity, irrespective of the shear stress we apply. And uh, stress means uh, force applied over area, just uh, to, to get the terms right. Strain means a change in length compared to the original length. So as you pull uh, the material apart. Uh, so again, uh, Newtonian fluids have a constant viscosity irrespective of the uh, uh, shear stress applied at a constant temperature. That means uh, the shear stress relation is linear. So it's uh, this one, behaves uh, similarly to a plastic. Non-Newtonian fluids have a non-constant viscosity, which might be time independent, time dependent, and uh, viscoelastic. So time independent, for instance, ketchup or grease, time dependent, for instance, yogurt, and viscoelastic, such as uh, lubricants. The different flow types that we can have uh, in microfluidic systems. Most characteristic is on the right, but uh, let's first start uh, from the, the easiest. Uh, you can open this video um, if you would like more information on uniform flow and uh, what that means. Well, uniform flow means that everywhere inside your stream you have the same flow rate or flow velocity. And uh, so this is a uniform flow. And it appears uh, in, for instance, uh, electroosmotic flows. So if you imagine a uh, fluid being driven between two electrode plates, then uh, that will have a uniform flow. Shear flow, or in other words, cuet flow, appears when you have a moving boundary on one side. So you have a plate that is moving uh, compared to the other plate. Uh, so this is... Uh, when uh, there's relative motion between the boundaries. And uh, the most common in uh, microfluidics, and uh, the one that you will certainly encounter, is the Poisy uh, flow profile or parabolic flow, which uh, is a pressure-driven flow type. We will look at this in more detail, but you can also uh, check out this uh, lecture that goes into a lot more detail on uh, how this flow profile is formed. So let's dig deeper into this uh, Poisy uh, flow profile or parabolic flow profile. Uh, this flow is pressure driven and the no-slip boundary condition applies, which means the boundary is solid 
and the flow velocity is zero at the boundary. Now, um, the system that we have here looks like this. So this is a pipe. It can also be a microchannel. And you have an inlet pressure, you have an outlet pressure, and you have a cross-section of this channel, whatever it is. Q is the flow rate. So I have all the quantities listed below here for reference. Uh, and then this section of the pipe is length of L. Again, characteristic length, uh, whatever it is. And it has a radius of R. So uh, the pressure drop or the, the pressure difference between the two ends will be possible to express like this. So what I would like to call your attention to is the quantities that characterize the size and shape of your channel, uh, the viscosity of the liquid that goes in, we will talk about it some more another time, and then the flow rate. And that's it. And uh, based on uh, which pressure is higher than the other, you can have negative pressure or positive pressure. So, in one case, uh, you have a vacuum on the outlet, in the other case, uh, you have a pump on the inlet. So, you either push on, on the inlet side or you pull on the outlet side. Uh, diffusion. This is pretty important. It's also one of the basic things that they teach you usually in, in the fluid mechanics courses. Um, very easy representation of diffusion would be like this, that you have a bunch of uh, molecules uh, suspended or particles suspended inside uh, a fluid and then over time they uh, spread out in every direction uniformly. Then um, the diffusion length can be estimated from uh, the diffusion coefficient and the time that uh, is spent. The diffusion coefficients can be calculated as a ratio. So why do we talk about all this? In microfluidics, mixing mostly happens on the interface by diffusion, and we will talk about what the interface is in one of the next uh, slides. And uh, this is important because if you just leave liquids next to each other, then it will take a mighty long time for them to mix. Uh, in macroscopic flows, you have turbulence that uh, takes care of that. But on the micro scale, you need to increase the surface area to speed up the mixing. And uh, I would also like to call your attention to the temperature dependence in both uh, the diffusion coefficient as well as just the uh, viscosity. Um, so let's talk about the interfaces and surface tension. Interface means the dividing line between two different types of fluids. In this case, let's talk about liquids. So here you have molecules of liquid one, here you have molecules of liquid two, and there's a dividing line between them. It's of course not a perfect dividing line. If you look at it under a microscope, then you will you will not see the individual molecules, obviously. So you will see that uh, these are very um, uh, sharply separated from each other. But in reality, there is some uh, mixing between these two liquids uh, through this line, which eventually will become uh, a lot more by diffusion. And even closer up, uh, this is how it looks like. Uh, between the, the two phases, this would be your interface. And what holds the, the, the molecules in a certain liquid together is the van der Waals attraction. In organic liquids, hydrogen bonds uh, in, uh, in polar liquids hold the molecules together. However, at the interface, half of the interactions are with the molecules from the other phase. And on a macroscopic level, what you see is the interface, but uh, but uh, on the microscopic level or, or nano, uh, nanometric level, then uh, you will see uh, the molecules crossing the interface. However, when you just look at it uh, from a macroscopic level, then uh, you will see a clear dividing line. So there's 
tension between these two surfaces. And uh, this is how we can express it, which is expressed from uh, the total cohesive energy per molecule and uh, the characteristic molecular dimension. So just remember that it is denoted by gamma and uh, the units are joules, joules per, meet, uh, per square meter. Um, more on this topic, so what surface tension means in practice is uh, that we can again create droplets, but also it means that uh, what you see at home, if you overfill uh, a glass of water and the, the meniscus of uh, water will bulge out of your cup, that is also a result of surface tension. And uh, yeah, just to emphasize, denoted by gamma, unit is gels per square meter. And um, it is also temperature dependent, but uh, to, to drive the point home even more, so it is the surface energy required to maintain uh, a surface area, that surface tension. And uh, the temperature dependence looks like this, that there is a, a critical temperature at which uh, the surface tension drops to zero, but uh, it is also defined in relation to surface tension at uh, uh, room temperature, in air at 20 degrees Celsius, so that is your uh, uh, T0, and uh, so this is your surface tension at room temperature. That's uh, what you will find in uh, libraries as a value, but it is defined in relation to this critical, critical temperature. And uh, here you have a table of uh, some common materials and their uh, surface tension at room temperature, also known as reference surface tension. Uh, contact angle. We will use this not only in this lecture, but also in another lecture. Uh, this is very important, so uh, keep this one in mind. Uh, contact angle would be defined as the angle here, between the triple contact line, between the three phases that uh, are around this uh, liquid, so it's a droplet because uh, this is easy to explain uh, as such. It's is kind of an in intuitive example. So you have uh, the contact line between liquid and gas, the contact line between solid and gas, and between uh, solid and liquid. And uh, then these are the vectors that represent uh, the surface tensions between uh, these uh, uh, media. And um, then you can define the contact angle as the arc cosine of uh, solid gas minus solid liquid over liquid gas uh, surface tensions. Yeah, I forgot to say that this droplet is at equilibrium, that is a criterion for this to work. And um, we can differentiate between um, four different types of contact. So hydrophilic means it likes water. So water tends to stick to, for instance, glass, which is uh, by default hydrophilic. There, the contact angle is below 90 degrees. Hydrophobic is water repellent, not liking water, basically. That, that is what it literally means. Contact angle is greater than 90 degrees. Uh, PDMS, a material that we often use in microfluidics, is, uh, for instance, by default hydrophobic. But many of the plastics that we use are also by default hydrophobic. Um, if you have a, a jacket that is water repellent, then it has a contact angle higher than 90 degrees. And um, on the other hand, hydrophilic surfaces uh, uh, like oil, and uh, hydrophobic surfaces don't like oil so much. So uh, hydrophobicity and oleophobicity are... Uh, uh, if, if something is hydrophobic, it is oleo oleophilic, and if something is hydrophilic, it is oleophobic. So it's uh, kind of the uh, reverse um, 
for water and oil. Um, now about uh, capillary and uh, hydrostatic pressure. So capillary pressure inside the tube is defined by looking at the meniscus inside this tube and uh, looking at the radius that we can draw uh, to this meniscus uh, if we consider it a half circle. And then uh, here's the contact angle closed between uh, the uh, between the different uh, media inside this system. We can express the capillary pressure as uh, as a fraction of the surface tension and uh, and said radius. Then uh, the capillary rise. So here it's uh, defined in a tube, but uh, the drawing is uh, actually also possible to imagine as uh, uh, parallel plates. Works the same as a, as a tube. So capillary rise inside the tube is defined as uh, such. Depends on uh, the surface tension, uh, the cosine of the contact angle. And then here comes our first material property, which is density. And then there's also a bunch of uh, forces playing a part. Uh, so gravity and uh, this one is not a force, this is also a, a quantity relating to the, the meniscus. And then hydrostatic pressure is defined as such. So this is the height of uh, the rise that uh, we are looking at here. Uh, so the height or depth of the fluid column. And again, just uh, for reference, the uh, quantities. So in this video, we talked about basic fluid mechanics that uh, will give you the basis for the, the following videos in this lecture. Continuum assumption, Newtonian and non-Newtonian fluids, flow types, diffusion, surface tension, and contact angle. And we will use most of these uh, in, in the coming uh, videos. Mm -hmm.